Hi everyone, my name is Joe Barnard, and in my continuing quest to take on too many projects, I've started a new one. It's called Operation Thump, and it is a silo-launched model rocket. As usual, I like to start most of these videos with a test to visually demonstrate what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and pressurize the system so you can see what's going on here. I'll do this using a 3000 PSI scuba tank, which I now bizarrely own, thanks to the generosity of the folks on Patreon. Um, this scuba tank allows me to not run the 4500 PSI compressor constantly to fill these smaller tanks. And instead what I can do is I can spend one day, I don't know, once a month or so, running that big compressor to pressurize the scuba tank, or I can get it filled at a scuba shop, and then I don't have to worry about running that super loud compressor. Okay, let's get started. With the two tanks connected and the bleed valve on the fill port open, I'll go ahead and open up the scuba tank just a little bit to make sure that we can actually drain some air. Nice. I'll go ahead and drain the air and then close the bleed valve now. Okay, and we started to fill. Okay, and it seems like we've stabilized out, so I will close the fill valve here. I'll open up the bleed valve. And now we can safely disconnect and our ground side tank has been filled. Now before we turn on the launch computer, I wanna dial in the working pressure with this more precise regulator right here. So I'll start turning the knob and we'll bring it up to about 90 PSI. Going up, 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 and right around 90. It's okay if it's not perfect here, but we're looking for 90 PSI because it's a pressure that I understand very well for the mass of this current vehicle. I've zoomed out so you can see what happens just a little bit better. So now we'll boot up the launch computer. And I've got a five second count programmed into it triggered by this dead man switch. So here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. And there we go, that's the Thump tube at work. <laughs> I'll put the rocket back in the silo, we'll turn up the computer, and now we can talk about this a little bit more. Before we jump into things, I'd like to make something super clear just to protect my personal safety, and that is to say, this is not a missile, and this is not a missile launcher. There's a model rocket and a model rocket launcher. Missiles are often launched from silos for a bunch of different reasons, um, and I have no intent to use this as any type of weapon system. It's a fun engineering challenge. I'm having a lot of fun with the development of it, and that's basically where it ends. So that's just my little not a, not a missile disclaimer, and we can jump into the details now. So this project has actually been going on for a little while now. Around the beginning of May, roughly a month and a half ago, um, I had this idea where I thought it would be fun to cold launch a model rocket. Um, and you have these two terminologies here. You have cold launching and hot launching. Cold launching is when the rocket is inside of a silo, it gets ejected first, and then while it is mid-air, in the middle of the air, it lights the motor and then goes on its way to wherever it's going. Um, and hot launching is when you fire the motor while the rocket is still inside the silo. Um, hot launching, I think it usually destroys the silo that the rocket is launching out of. Um, or you could have something like the Titan II, which could launch and then eject all of the, um, what do you call it? rocket exhaust out of the sides in this like gorgeous V pattern. Um, there are a lot of cool ways that you can launch from a silo. Anyway, this project has been going on for a while now under the code name of Operation Thump. I actually did a live stream uh, a couple weeks ago where I was designing parts in CAD um, live on this channel for this project. In terms of the design decisions that I've made, a lot of this hardware is really, really close to the hardware that's used for the reaction control system, which incidentally is this exact vehicle. So uh, you probably saw, we did a recent stream where I was testing the roll thrusters on this. By the way, um, after working with Tom Stanton, there's a video in the description down below, but after working with Tom um, on his project for a reaction controlled drone, I'm realizing we can really improve the nozzle design of these thrusters. So there's a lot of work uh, coming up on that avenue. The point here is that a lot of the hardware I've chosen to use in the reaction control project actually fits pretty well in the Thump project or the silo project. Um, these valves are the same ones that are inside the flight vehicle. Um, we've got the same flight tank and flight regulators. Um, there are a couple of extra parts and I think we should go over them now. Starting with the basics, all the stuff is controlled by the BPS.Space Impulse D2 launch computer. This is the internal computer used to launch most of the BPS rockets. Um, it actually is in the middle of a big design change after the Scout D1 flight failure. 
Um, anyway, we uh, are all controlled by the impulse computer here. This flight tank is the same one as the reaction control system. So we started at about 3000 PSI in this flight tank. Once again, usually filled from the ground side scuba tank. Um, after coming out of the flight tank, we regulate down to about 800 PSI and then roughly 150. And this is where our first change comes in. So right here, I've got this new pressure regulator in the system. And it's a little bit different than the other pressure regulators that we have in that this regulator can actually be adjusted to different settings. So as I turn this knob, as I turn this little dial here, we can change what pressure we're regulating to with a decent amount of precision. And this is really important because the mass of the vehicles that we're going to be ejecting from this tube, basically how large they are, that's gonna change. We're gonna try to eject a bunch of different type of vehicles from this tube, ideally. Um, and so the force with which the piston inside this tube actually pushes these things out, um, that's gonna need to change. And that is a direct function of the pressure in the system, which is why we need this precision control. After coming out of the regulator at whatever pressure we set, this air goes into the first set of valves. Now we have two identical valves that are basically holding a split stream of air. Um, and if you're wondering why this is, you might think maybe it's for redundancy or something like that. Redundancy is sort of an added benefit, um, but the real purpose here is the mass flow rate. Um, so if you remember in one of the last RCS videos, I actually talked about how the valves had a very small orifice in them. They didn't have a very high mass flow rate. So I've just sort of brute force fixed the problem by adding two valves here. Um, it's a little bit janky, but again, they're, they're model rockets. You know, I can fix it in a lot of different weird ways. So <laughs> going after these first valves are a second set of valves. So we've got sort of an arming set and then a firing set here. And once these second set of valves actuate in conjunction with the first, we send all of this pressure, you know, up to 150 PSI into a big piston, a big air cylinder right here that actually ejects the rocket. Now there's one more little secret valve here and that's the bleed valve. So this little guy has two functions. The first is to actually drain the system of pressure after the vehicle has left the silo or after the launch. You can actually hear it pretty well when the vehicle leaves the tube. That's the sound. That's the bleed valve doing its work. So we have anywhere between ah, like 60 and 150 PSI that ends up getting pushed into the cylinder that pushes the piston up that launches the rocket, but there's no way to relieve that pressure until you open the bleed valve. Um, and you want to do that so that you're not just messing with connections and things like that that have randomly 150 PSI of pressure in them. Now I mentioned there's a second purpose for this valve and it's pretty cool in my opinion. So we're using these low quality parts, right? These are like $10 valves off of Amazon. They're nothing fancy. Um, and I kind of expect that at some point they'll have some amount of leak to them, just a static leak where if we have 150 PSI on one side and 14 PSI or zero, depending on how you're measuring it, um, on the other side, we're gonna have a little bit of air flowing through those valves. And if you think about how this piston works, this piston that's inside the silo here, um, any amount of air that gets into the piston is going to start to push the rocket up and out of the tube, even if it's just very, very slowly. So if the rocket is idling in this silo for let's say 15 to 30 minutes while we're preparing to launch it, that's a big problem because even a small leak will result in the rocket basically starting to travel up out of the tube. Um, and not only is that a problem for anything like a silo cover or things like that, but it's a problem because we lose the amount of uh, travel that we can have on our pistons. So this bleed valve basically remains open during the launch sequence all the way up until T minus two seconds, at which point the bleed valve closes. Any leaks were basically committed to at that point. So I mentioned this silo door here, and that's a great segue into what we're still missing from this project. And the answer, <laughs> into that is a lot. We're still missing a lot from this project. Starting off with the silo door, this thing should be servo actuated um, so that the computer can control when the silo is open and closed. Um, we're working on that. I just haven't worked on this design in a little while. I also need to add some rollers to the inside of the tube. If you notice right now, the rocket can rotate pretty freely inside here um, and that's no good. It will probably be okay, but we want some rollers to help basically guide it up on its way out of the tube so it's not hitting the side of it. Um, other things we need to add are raceways to carry all of this messy cabling. We need little LED mounts because you have to have LEDs um, and a few other little bits and pieces here and there. The other thing that's probably worth mentioning is how much you can design in CAD and how much you cannot. 
So most of this was designed in CAD, and a couple of days ago I said, you know what, I think it's time that we actually start building this thing. This is made out of cardboard, it's very cheap to buy, and I figured the best way to actually figure out where all these components to go is just to start drilling holes and trying things. Um, so in placing all of these components, a lot of them were very rough and not precise measurements. My philosophy was basically just, let's just start drilling holes and see how it works. That usually isn't the right approach in aerospace, but for model rockets, I think it's okay. All of that is to say that this is far from the final version of this actual thump tube. Um, it, it's obviously far too short, the silo door can't close, um, so it'll be much longer, much larger, and much better painted in the future. A couple other details to cover here in terms of the vehicles that can actually launch from this. I'm trying to keep it pretty flexible. We're gonna start with flights that use thrust vector control. So the rocket will launch and just use TVC to keep itself upright on the way up. And we're gonna build a separate vehicle for that. It won't be Scout, it won't be Echo, it won't be the RCS rocket. Um, actually, reaction controlled flights are planned for the future down the road, but I do wanna start with thrust vector control because it's something I know really well and I wanna sort of uh, just keep things as simple as possible while also being needlessly complicated. Anyway, all of this stuff is still changing, so if you have thoughts or questions or concerns or who knows what, just leave them in the comments down below. I would love some feedback on this stuff. Um, so that's all from me for now. Um, thanks again to the folks who support BPS on Patreon. I say it in just about every video at this point, but these projects are ridiculous. They don't make any sense financially, um, <laughs> that's for sure, but uh, the folks who support on Patreon allow these ridiculous projects to happen. So. Thanks again to those folks. Thank you to you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.